Touching every part, I'm rushing. I'm rushing. You are here, healing every part. I'm rushing. I'm rushing. You are here, turning lights and. Stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. 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 
Good evening and a really warm welcome to you to our six o'clock evening service. It's Palm Sunday 
which means it's the beginning of Holy Week, which is it's one of those times of the year which I think lots of people love. So really warm welcome to you. And if you're online, sorry I didn't do the, the, the five minute bit beforehand, I'm just not used to it yet. Um, so really warm welcome to you watching online and hopefully you'll enjoy the service. I don't see heaters around tonight, so hopefully there will be no problems with any, any power cuts or anything. So let's, let's just be quiet for a moment and let's just pray and then we can begin to worship God. So faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's stand and worship.
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, it's uh, Palm Sunday. Hopefully you will have been given uh, one of the crosses as you came in. This was the Sunday when I was younger I always used to like because for some reason they used to give you a sword and you walked in the door. But you know, we've got to, it's a bit different, isn't it? Because it's all about Jesus. It's all about the cross. And this is the symbol. And I used to love Palm Sunday as it led up to, to Easter when I was younger. So hopefully if you've been given a palm cross, maybe you can hold it up. Okay, maybe you can hold it up because that's the symbol that we're going to be thinking about this week. The cross and about what it means to us. If you haven't got a, a palm cross, we've got some more. Grab one on your way out. So let's just say a blessing for these palm crosses. Maybe you want to keep holding up your cross. So God, our Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And let's just continue with time of prayer. And as I pray this evening, I'm just going to use a little response. When I say, let us pray to the Lord, I just ask that you say, Lord, have mercy. And it's on the screen that you can see. So let's just be quiet for a moment. <coughs> Lord God, we just pray that your spirit will be with us this evening. <coughs> for as we come to the beginning of Holy Week, that time of real reflection on the cross and what it means. I just pray that you will help us this evening and this week to be able to remember what that symbol, that cross means. So we stand with Christ in his suffering for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which means spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. I pray this week, Lord, that you will help us to be able to begin to make a change in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And we pray for Christian people that through the suffering of disunity, they may grow a rich union in Christ. And we pray as they seek this Holy Week for Christians around the world. We pray for unity. Unity in one faith, one cross, one Christ crucified. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And we pray for those who make the laws, who interpret them, who administer them that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. And we pray for the governments around the world. We pray for our own government. We pray especially for those who are involved helping to solve the problems in Ukraine and other conflicts. Lord, we pray that you will give leaders the wisdom to be able to make the right choices and to think about their people first. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, the place where our Lord Jesus grew up, where the disciples learnt about the power of the cross. So Lord, we pray for peace in their land. And we remember and pray for Christians battling around the world. Places where they are trying to bring your word to people who have never heard about you. And they've been persecuted because of it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, particularly as COVID is still causing a problem where people are having to be isolated from their family members or friends pray that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who are weighed down with hardship, with failure or sorrow. 
who feel that God is far away from them. Lord, we pray that you will not be far away, that this Easter you will be near. And we pray for those who are sick, for those who are unwell, for those who are struggling. I'll just give you a moment just to think of some of the people you know that you want to bring their names to God. So let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we pray that, that with those who have died in faith, we may find mercy in the day of Christ. And we pray that this holy week we'll be able to remember your death on the cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And let's just finish our time of prayer with the Lord's Prayer, that prayer that Jesus taught us. So together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple of notices from me for the young people and some of you as well. Um, we had a great day yesterday. Um, you would have heard me up here sharing and asking, pleading that you would, uh, some of you might come forward to help us uh, advertise our Easter services with some outreach um, yesterday. And I'm pleased to say that it was a huge success. Um, we gave out probably over 200 little Easter eggs by engaging children in a game. And we even had some young people come and help us, and I'm a proud youth worker. Um, their their effort, it was their, it was their first experience of outreach. And just the way that they grabbed some flyers and then chased people around the street going, here, have a flyer for church, I thought was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, it couldn't have gone any better, and we had a giant chalkboard which people came and filled. Um, we had written on, on there, we had written the question, what does Easter mean to you? And that just prompted questions in people. And we had some great discussions and yeah, the board was filled. Um, if you're an adult and you would like to support the youth ministry um, in any way, then please come and see me. But from next term, we're gonna be looking for some volunteers to help with our Youth Connect groups. We've got some people that are moving on and we'd like to grow the team. So if that's something that you feel called to, then please do come see me after the service. And now finally, young people and children, we're going to head out. Thank you. Uh, one or two of the things to mention in our, our notices. If you are new to the church, very warm welcome. I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning. I'm Andrew. I'm one of the staff team. I, I know that many of you know me by now. You see me around. Uh, and Max is going to be coming and preaching just in a moment after Cheryl's done uh, the reading, the Bible reading. Uh, so if you are new to the church, then please remember to fill in a welcome card. Come and speak to one of us after the service. Uh, we're always going to great to speak to you and find out a little bit more about you. And of course, we don't pass around uh, the, the kind of basket for money or anything. We've got the machine at the back. And we really would encourage you that if you want to give to us, if you're a regular member, then it's great if you can give. We have the machine at the back to make it easy, or it's great to do it by standing order and various things like that. But it's really great if you could do that because it does help the work of the church. Things that Sam was talking about and the different ministries that are going on. And the other main uh, notice to give you is our Easter services. Because, of course, it's Holy Week, and it's a busy, busy week that's going to be going on this week. Um, we've got the Monday, Thursday service, stripping the altar on Thursday evening. And then on Good Friday, there is going to be the Good Friday service in here, followed by a witness walk down to the old, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, jail, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to call it girl, but I'm thinking about football. Um, and then there is the service at 11 o'clock for the churches together. So it'd be great if we could see as many of you as possible that on Good Friday. And then, of course, on Easter Sunday, we have got our services at 9 and 11 o'clock and our 6 o'clock 
uh, Easter Alive service with Holy Communion and baptisms. And I've been asked to let you know that there is going to be pizza after the service next Sunday evening, but you have to bring £1.50 in cash. That's what I've been told. So if you want some pizza, you have to bring £1.50 in cash, and there's going to be slices of pizza available after that service. And I've been asked by the, the office, if you would like to help distribute that, they need one or two volunteers for that as well. And that is all the notices I think I've been asked to give. And let's just have our reading. Thank you. Our reading this evening is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Let's just have a prayer together before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Pray that it may be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The, um, before I started, I said to uh, Ali, uh, I've, uh, I've got a bad uh, cough. He said, one of these tickly coughs. And, you know, he tickles and he coughs and then it gets worse. He said, I've got just a thing. And he gave me a little tablet that I've got in my pocket. In fact, it's so small. I thought at first it was a, a button, but it's not. So if I'm taking that halfway through, don't worry about it. But if I collapse, come and pick me up. <laughs> what I thought I'd want to do just before we, we, we start is that we start thinking about this Palm Sunday and this particular demonstration I want to think just for a minute in prayer for the people of the Ukraine. And Lord, we do pray for these folks that we see on our television screens, most evenings on the news, these children, these adults, these people who are in so much suffering, so much pain, so much destruction. And we do lift them to you at this time, wherever they are, those that have found security in other countries, we thank you for them and for the countries that are giving them the help. And we do pray for those who remain, those in cities that are isolated and they are in virtually imprisoned in the, the uh, various cellars uh, that are left in, that, in those cities. And we, we do just lift these people, we pray for safety for them. And we do just commit those, these folks and we pray for an end to the war 
that Satan will be defeated and, and Christ will be seen to triumph. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, demonstrations and marches. Well, nothing new, are they? Here we have one on the first Sunday of Easter week, Palm Sunday. And what happened when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the city of the great king? Well, it was a noisy, lively affair, lots of shouting, lots of singing, lots of waving branches and banners and various other things, spreading garments on the floor. Jerusalem was packed. It was the feast of the Passover, and therefore there were loads of people and they were pouring in from all over the world, the known world at the time, for this great festival of the Passover. So it's small wonder the Jewish authorities were annoyed uh, because it claimed to be a, 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 this, this demonstration that was taking place with Jesus on the donkey riding into Jerusalem. And, and they, they, were, they were really annoyed because they cla claimed to be a religious de demonstration and it wasn't the way the established church did things. Does that sound uh, popular for today? The established church doesn't do things like that. It reminds me of a story. I might have told it before, but I'll tell it again. Uh, it's not a true story, but it, I think it's quite amusing, really. It's about a chap who was on holiday over here from America, and he was a member of the Southern Baptist Church in America, which is a very lively affair. And uh, he uh, went into St. Paul's Cathedral to worship one Sunday morning, and he sat there, and the service uh, went on very nice as it normally did. And all of a sudden, he stood up in the air and he said, Praise the Lord, hallelujah! Well, everything stopped dead, you can imagine, can't you, really? And everything stopped dead, and, and look, they looked at him, and there was silence. And anyway, uh, he, he, he sat down, and uh, the service went on again. And about five minutes later, he jumped up again and said, Praise the Lord, hallelujah! And at that point, the, the church warden walked across to him. And, and he, he said to him, sir, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we don't do things like that uh, here. And, uh, and so uh, the dish chap said, it's all right, it's all right, I've got God. And so the church warden said to him, yes, you may have, sir, but you didn't get him here. <laughs> and that was the sort of thing here, the Jerusalem, the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees said, we don't do this sort of thing here. Here we have this man riding into Jerusalem upon the donkey. But behind this demonstration, there were obviously political elements underlying the whole business. And in some ways, there had been a, a three-year build-up to this of Jesus' ministry. This wasn't the first time Jesus had come to Jerusalem. Over these three years of ministry, he'd been coming backwards and forwards into Jerusalem. And of course, the scribes and the Pharisees and the religious leaders they didn't like him very much because he was causing all sorts of problems. And the religious leaders had to act expediently in relation to, to Jesus because he was claiming to be a king. And this might, of course, rock the boat, and the Romans might think that King Jesus was a, a rallying point for rebellion and violence towards the Roman emperor. So they were thinking that must be a political demonstration. And the Jewish hierarchy might lose their privileges and their benefits if the Romans felt the need to clamp down on the Jewish leaders and the, pe and the people. And therefore, this demonstration was politically dangerous for the religious leaders. And on top of that, the religious leaders, the high priest and his uh, cronies, disliked Jesus and the claims that he was making for himself. And over those three years, Jesus had made it very clear uh, that he was more than just this peasant uh, that uh, w was going around doing wonderful things. And they wanted him dead because he claimed to be the Messiah. And so here we have the background, and it's against this political and religious background that this procession and demonstration needs to be viewed. And as we read this, uh, the uh, account uh, we need to watch the lowly yet majestic figure of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Not on a stallion, which would have been the symbol of, uh, of a leader, in, of, of, of the people into battle. No, he was on a donkey. And this was the climax of three years of ministry. So how do we see Jesus? Well, the first thing to notice about Jesus was his courage. We can scarcely fail to be impressed by his courage. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, he was moving with deliberate purpose 
to his last bitter hours in conflict. And he knew what was ahead of him. When Jesus, just not long before that, had been on the Mount of Transfiguration, demonstrating to his, uh, his inner circle of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, of who he was. And he was declaring to them they saw his deity, that he was God incarnate. He was speaking to Moses and Elijah, Elijah about his exodus, is the word that's used. It wasn't from Egypt this time. It's an exodus from this world into the promised land of heaven. And Jesus, they saw Jesus for what he was. He was God incarnate. He knew what was ahead of him. And when that transfiguration was over, what did he do? He came down from the mountaintop and he went down into the valley and he set his face to, to go to Jerusalem. And they saw very clearly that he was going to do that. And we get from the Gospel of, of, of John the fact that uh, uh, they knew, did the disciples, that if he went to Jerusalem again, what was going to happen? Something not very pleasant. And we read in John's Gospel how Thomas saw Jesus going towards Jerusalem and striding out. And he said to the other disciples, let's go with him that we may die with him. His enemies in the city were planning to destroy him. He was a wanted man, but he was a man of great courage. And we too are called to be men and women of great courage. You know, we can't stay on the mountaintops in our Christian lives. We have to come down to where the, 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 into the valleys of, of this world that we live in so that we can follow the Lord Jesus Christ in those valleys and in the darkness and the difficulties that we face and they're facing in the Ukraine. And our brothers and sisters in Christ are, fa are facing in countries all over this world, losing their lives, losing their homes, losing their families. Why? Because they name the name of Christ. As Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey, the city lies before him. And Jesus was frightened. We know that because after he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it was just before they arrested him, and he prayed, and he was sweating, as it were, great drops of blood, because he was the agony, and he said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. And he said, then he said, no, no not my will, but yours be done. Jesus was frightened. He wasn't superhuman. He was, a, he, was a, he was fully human. And so when that was all through and the sense as they were, as they were coming, in, going to, uh, coming into Jerusalem, and he, he sends the disciples off to get a donkey. Go and find a donkey. And he borrowed a donkey. And he rode into Jerusalem on this donkey. And he rides in to meet the murderous hatred of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the whole Jewish hierarchy. And there was, there's magnificent courage here. And the way God was, was taking him was, wasn't easy. It isn't easy for us often, is it? But compared to this, it is. He needed great courage. Those who threw palm leaves at his feet and shouted, Hosanna, son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, would in a few days' time be shouting, crucify him. Not all of them would say that, but a majority of them would, because here was this man, and they were, they were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, this is the Messiah. And they were throwing palm leaves, and they were shouting, and Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, and they, they thought, this is the Messiah. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be the type of Messiah we're looking for, but he's, we believe he's the Messiah. And then all of a sudden, he's taken, and he's arrested, and he's crucified, and he's dead and buried within a few days. And when he was arrested, and this, the crowd saw him, they said he's not the Messiah at all. He needs crucifying. He's an imposter. He's pretending to be the Messiah, and he's not. He's pretending to be the Son of God, and he's not. That's why they crucified him. However, others would believe. Well, what does this teach us? Well, it teaches us that to follow Christ often means hostility. 
No servant is greater than his master. And it does need guts and determination to follow Jesus in our daily jobs and wherever God puts us in this life, facing difficulties, facing hardships, facing misunderstanding. And like Jesus, we need courage. And he knows and he walks with us along our path of discipleship. And he knows what it's like to be frightened and to walk into the lion's den. And secondly, he was a man of poverty. And notice when Jesus decided to enter the city of Jerusalem as king of the Jews, he did so on a borrowed donkey, a beast of burden. The king of glory was a pauper here on earth. And so St. Paul wrote, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. And the Gospels provide evidence of this at his birth. He borrowed a stable. He borrowed a manger. And the Last Supper, he borrowed the upper room. And he had nowhere to lay his head, we're told. And he borrowed a donkey. The Lord, the creator of the world, was a Lord of poverty. And the church should always be the voice of the poor. I was preaching about this the other week. I'm not saying that Christians should always uh, be poor for the sake of it. That's nonsense, really. Some fine Christians who are very rich use their mo mo money very wisely for the extension of God's kingdom, and we praise God for that. But we should always realize that both in, as a church and as individuals and as Christians, we, need, we are stewards of what God gives us and entrust us with. And whatever we have is not ours. We are stewards of all that he gives us. God is no man's debtor. There is no point in being poor for us, ourselves for the sake of it. But all God gives us, we need to use for the extension of God's kingdom. We need to give and not to count the cost. Give what we have been given. Our affluence our education, let's use it. Our affluence, let's use it. Our ability to articulate, let's use it. We have the responsibility to use all this for the extension of God's kingdom because our Lord was a man of poverty. His lifestyle identified with the underprivileged. It's not easy to identify how to do that. We all need to work that out for ourselves in the light of our own circumstances before our loving Heavenly Father. How can we use what God has given us for the extension of, our king, of His kingdom? So he rode into Jerusalem as a king on a borrowed donkey. And thirdly, we see his humility. Because by riding into Jerusalem this way, he was clearly asserting his kingship. He was acting out a parable which clearly showed his messiahship. In that reading, it quoted a passage from the book of Zechariah. Rejoice, O daughter of, Je of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. Jesus was acting out a parable. Now, they didn't realize that until later on. I don't think reading the scriptures and looking at it, the, the, those, that crowd that were there shouting and throwing palm leaves knew that he was in fact acting out that parable from Zechariah. They did later. He came riding on a donkey, not a horse. He was not accompanied by armed forces brandishing swords. His companions were a bunch of simple peasants waving palm branches. It wasn't a very imposing spectacle. Imperial Rome wouldn't have had much, uh, been much impressed by it. He was acting out this prophecy, making plain the kind of king he was, the kind of kingdom that he'd come to bring. He comes as a king, meek and lowly, not to make war on the Romans, but to win a great spiritual conquest. To redeem humankind from the bondage of sin and Satan and to exercise his rule of love in the hearts of his people. 
Now, it's obvious that people believed at this point in time that he was the Messiah, as we've already mentioned. Yet John Gos John's gospel makes it clear that the disciples and also the crowd, I think, I would think, didn't understand until after the resurrection the significance of this acted parable. The Jewish authorities would have nothing to do with this whole event. It didn't even begin to match up to the, their idea of messiahship. And so they rejected him as an imposter. And before the end of that week, he was crucified, as I say, dead and buried. And many of this crowd shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest was shouting, crucify him by Friday. And fourthly, we read of his majesty. So what are we to make of this Palm Sunday? Was the whole thing something of a fiasco? Did it all end up as a failure? With Christ arrested and beaten and imprisoned and finally crucified, was it all a failure? These disciples that had followed him and believed in him, what happened to them when he was arrested? They fled. They were hiding behind locked doors. They were fearful. They were frightened. They were going to be captured and they were going to be crucified as well. That's why they ran. That's why they were hiding. That's why on that, in, that, when he was in Gethsemane, when he was arrested, they ran into the, into the darkness. So, in fact, they, in many respects, weren't sure what was going on. One of, the, one of the interesting things about the resurrection is that all of a sudden, these men changed from this group of psychologically damaged uh, men and, and women into men that went to, into the town and into the city of Jerusalem saying, he has ridden, he has risen. A terrific change. Why? because they'd seen the risen Christ. That's what changed them. That's what made them willing to lay down their lives. Men don't mind to lay down their lives for something to be a lie when they knew things were a lie. They saw the risen Christ. They, at the end, realized that, the, that Christ had risen. He had risen indeed. And on, 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 on Easter Day, that's what we shall be saying here. When Will says to you, he is risen, your reply will be, he is risen indeed. He's alive. But at this point in time, Jesus had failed. I think I mentioned that I read a book a number of years ago, written by a friend of mine called Russ Parker. Russ Parker I've known for many years. When I was a curate in Birkenhead on Merseyside, Russ Parker was a long-haired hippie at a Baptist church in Birkenhead. And he became, he was ordained eventually, and he became the leader of the Acorn Healing Trust. And he wrote a book called Free to Fail. And if you read that book, Jesus was on the surface failed. Because in the eyes of the disciples, when Jesus was arrested and they fled, he, they thought, that he wasn't, they, they thought that he who had been the Messiah, they thought that he had, wasn't, and that he had failed. Jesus failed in the eyes of the Jews because his claims to Messiahship had proved to be false. They'd arrested him and they killed him. He failed in the eyes of the Romans because they crucified, crucified him with common criminals. They'd failed, and he writes this book, does Russ Parker, because at the end of it, he said he didn't fail because he, ro he rose from the dead. He didn't stay dead. He rose again. But we all know how it ended. He rose from the dead. There was an empty tomb, and he ascended back to his father. I don't understand it. As I said to you before, there's more and more mystery goes on the more and more I, I, I go and walk on in my Christian life. We too, in the eyes of the world, are failures. Christ is dead. We may, like Jesus, have failed, but Christ, in actual fact, has risen. And this ride into Jerusalem was a ride of triumph to come. 
And at the, at the time of this ride into Jerusalem, the crowd sensed a royal occasion. For joy they cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they threw these palm leaves on the ground and probably their, their cloaks and their, their, the things that where they were wearing. And of course the Pharisees didn't like it and they protested vigorously. And they said to Jesus, tell them to stop. This is what they're saying, tell them to stop. And Jesus said, if I tell them to stop, these very stones will cry out of, as to who I am. <coughs> Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus replied with those wonderful words, the very stones would cry out. So on this Palm Sunday, we bring our worship to our King. I asked Ali a few, uh, earlier in the week, can we sing a, a, an old hymn? And, and he, Ali said, I don't think I can do it. And it's this one. All glory, Lord, and honor to thee, Redeemer King. The people of the Hebrews with palms before him went. Our prayer and praise and anthem before him we present. Jesus is, was the Son of God riding into Jerusalem, the Messiah. Our Lord is a man of courage. Are we people of courage? Our Lord is a man of poverty. Have we priority, are our priorities right? Are we people of generosity? He was a man of humility. Are we proud people in the wrong way? He was a man of majesty. Make Christ king of your life. And let him rule in majesty in your life. And as we go through this, this next week, realize what Christ has done for you and uh, give your heart and life to him because he loves you. Amen. I am tab my tablet. Thank you, Max. So as the band just come back up before we worship again, maybe we'll just take just a moment just to think and reflect about what Max has said to us. What were the words or phrases that have come in your mind? Let it just sift for a moment in your head. And maybe let's just pray. Lord God, we just thank you for the words that Max has brought as we begin Holy Week, as we think about this Palm Sunday. We just pray and ask that you will help us to be somebody who can stand up for the cross. Lord, we pray that your spirit will be with us. You will give us the courage, the humility. Not be scared to fail, but to be like, more like Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
stop, can't stop working, can't stop, can't stop working.
Thank you. 
Lord, thank you for coming here to worship this evening. As we come towards the end of our service, just remember that if anything has happened to you tonight, if Max has said something, if the worship has moved you, and you do want somebody to pray with you, then please come down to ministry area down the front, and we'll be glad to pray with you. So let's just have a final prayer to bring this service to an end. So may Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice, in obedience to the Father's will, keep us steadfast as we walk with him the way of his cross. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And have a good week. And hopefully see you at the services this Holy Week.